Almost every year, over 1,000 tornadoes impact the United States. 2023 was a very active tornado year with events like Rolling Fork and the dual high-risk day in March grabbing attention as well over a thousand twisters struck over the months. The sea surface temperatures in the East Pacific actually play a big role in not just hurricane season but also tornado activity as the flip between La Nina patterns and El Nino patterns can make a huge difference. In 2023, after multiple years in a La Nina, the shift to El Nino began, but now, after six months in El Nino, those cooler Pacific waters want to return, meaning La Nina's comeback could completely alter our tornadic pattern. In this video, we will take a look at historical suggestions and new model trends to break down the spring tornado forecast month by month. So sit back, relax, subscribe, see what I did there, and check out our friend Weatherbell's free trial link in the description for maps like what I'll show in the video. Here we go. Looking back at previous years for similar trends in the El Nino to La Nina shift, you can see our most recent big examples were 1998 and 2016, where strong El Nino phases indicated by the red shading quickly turned over to some form of La Nina over the course of the year. This graphic shows us 1998, where a really explosive tornado year of over 1400 twisters occurred. Clusters of high tornado density are visible in Oklahoma, the upper Midwest, as well as a couple pockets further east in places like Tennessee and even Pennsylvania. The bottom line on this graphic shows that a lot of the year's tornado reports actually finished off the spring and continued into the early summer month of June. Meanwhile, in 2016, April and May were very active, with the year's overall tornado count lower, but especially prominent through the High Plains, Illinois and Indiana, and then with a swath of reports through the Mid-South. While the highest average between the two years favors the Midwest as a popular tornado zone, this doesn't 100% mean that this year will be like that. This is just a previous historic trend worth noting in this year's forecast. Taking a look at the Climate Prediction Center's March temperature forecast, the remnants of our weakening El Nino phase remain visible, as cooler than average temperatures look at least possible to even likely across the south, with most of the northern tier staying above normal in this prediction. The equal chances zone across the central plains and midwest tells me that some bigger warm-ups may be possible at times before being followed by cooler pushes of air. Could this be something worth noting for our March tornado outlook? Certainly so, as storm systems might start filling up the region based on those trends. The precipitation outlook from the Climate Prediction Center for the same window shows parts of the central plains getting above average precip, with the southeast coast also remaining active, although this might be more of a nuisance rain in most cases there. Using historical data and these new trends, here is my March tornado forecast. I think that March will be toned down a little bit from recent years with cooler air moving through the south as a result, broadening the chances for tornadoes. However, I think a fairly large zone with at least a moderate tornado chance will be visible from the lower Mississippi Valley all the way on up to parts of the Midwest. Remember that as I show these graphics, any area not highlighted still has a chance for tornadoes, but my projections are where I expect the most clusters of twisters. April tornado climatology suggests that areas from the southern plains to even parts of the Ohio Valley should monitor tornado chances. In 2020, another year with a shift from an El Nino to a La Nina, a major April occurred, highlighted by a dangerous and tragic Easter outbreak that moved through parts of the south. This is outside of the most prominent climatological region, so it goes to show that there remains high uncertainty in these tornado forecasts. Looking at the Climate Prediction Center's temperature forecast for the entire spring, which encompasses April smack dab in the middle, we can see that northern anomaly with those warmer temperatures up there, with equal chances further south. The precept map shows above average precipitation from parts of the plains eastward, so the combination of occasional cooler shots and above average precept being indicated could be the signal for an aver average to even active spring picking up. Here's my official April 2024 tornado outlook, and you can see here that I do have a little bit more red showing up on the map from parts of eastern Oklahoma in eastern Texas on over to western Georgia. This doesn't mean that this area is going to be the most active all month, but I do think that using climatological data and using some newer model trends showing areas above average with temperatures and precipitation, this will be an active area, but anywhere from the southern plains to the southeast being on high alert. Models like the European Seasonal agree with the Climate Prediction Center on precip, showing an active east throughout the end of spring and into early summer. 
With severe weather climatology favoring parts of the southern high plains in May and other data in mind, let's show my May tornado outlook. Taking a look at that May tornado outlook here, you can see that I'm not only showing those zones that are climatologically favored there through parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, but also including parts of South Dakota, even into parts of Minnesota, Iowa, southwestern Wisconsin, watching that zone for our potentially highest concentration of tornadoes during the month, with other zones through parts of just the general Midwest, on down even further down parts of the Mississippi River Valley, watching out for tornadoes during the month of May. While meteorological spring does not include June, of course astronomical spring does. In fact, towards the middle to back half of the month, you are still in astronomical spring. So I did want to include this in our tornado outlook. You can see that over parts of the north central United States, the upper Midwest, and into the Great Lakes is where I expect our frequency of tornadoes to be at its highest. I wouldn't be shocked if a few isolated outbreaks occurred over this region, just like with at any time in other regions during these outlooks. After assessing a lot of data here, let's take a look at our overall outlook for tornadoes in comparison to average. You can see that I've highlighted a region including most of the central and north central plains for above average tornado frequency throughout the, the spring months, even into parts of the Midwest and Great Lakes getting in on at least slightly above average tornado activity. I overall expect the rest of areas to be near average or just a little bit below average, with especially areas in West Texas where it might be drier than average, and along the Gulf Coast staying, staying a little bit actually below average in the tornado department. Keep in mind that no matter what zone you're in, you should prepare for potential tornadoes and stay up to date with the latest forecasts with sites like weather.gov. And now with just a little bit more of an unedited discussion here and a few things to talk about here while we still look at that previous graphic. Just keep in mind that as we progress throughout the spring and summer, I made this outlook using climatological data, looking at similar years to this, and throwing this together over the last few days. So this is by no means going to be a guarantee. Tornadoes can happen inside and outside of zones that I've highlighted. Keep in mind that everything I've shown is relative. I just want to make sure you know all of these things so that you're not just going out thinking that this is 100% going to happen. Feel free to leave any feedback as spring goes on or leave any comments down below though about how you felt about this forecast even as we go through time. And I just want to end with a reminder to hit that subscribe button as I finish out this video here. This is not necessarily my normal style of video. Normally I kind of do sit down weather model analysis videos and forecasts. If you want more like that, hit that subscribe button. Help me get to that 3000 subscriber goal. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here are the credits everyone. One Nation Web.